Okay, I think we could summarize this uh, last group of three uh, bacterial infections as being the ones uh, caused by organisms which don't have uh, classical, predictable, or strong gram staining abilities. So that includes the treponemal infections of which syphilis caused by treponema pallidum is always at the top of the list and the one you may see. These other two, yaws caused by treponema pertenue or pinta caused by treponema carateum. It probably you will never see these diseases. You will see the uh, tuberculosis caused by the Cook bacillus. Cook was the guy who uh, established the Cook postulates, which was the basis of how we know or how we can prove that a specific uh, organism is causing a specific disease. Uh, the causative organism of tuberculosis is Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or less likely Mycobacterium bovis. There are a few other uh, not as nearly as common mycobacterial diseases or things you may, may not see too much like leprosy. But uh, you may see the atypical mycobacterial infections, mycobacterial canzaceae, mycobacterial avium, mycobacterial intracellulare. These are all atypical mycobacteria like TB, but caused by uh, organisms which are slightly different and like TB as well. Uh, very likely in immunosuppressed patients. The uh, acto actinomycotic type uh, bacteria, sometimes you, you might say they're uh, related to fungi as well. They don't stain well with the gram stain, so they're generally more likely to be seen on fungal stains. But nocardia and actinomycosis are both in that same category, and these are common. Uh, in organisms, bacteria involving oral and upper respiratory tract. Okay, we're done with our nine basic uh, groups of uh, bacterial infections. Let's say something about bacteria and generally that's refreshing and pictorial. Uh, as you know, the common uh, adjectives for bacteria are either bacilli, which look like little rods, or cocci, which are little circles. If they're gram positive, they're blue by common laboratory standings or things you might do yourself. If they're gram negative because of counter stains and so forth, uh, they'll look red. So all four possibilities are common. Gram positive cocci, which are blue balls. Gram negative cocci, which are red balls, like you see here. Gram positive bacilli, which are blue box cars or blue rods or blue bacilli. And gram negative uh, bacilli. And we talked about why they are gram positive or gram negative. But uh, from the point of view of just kind of remembering things uh, logically rather than trying to kill yourself with rote memorization, just remember one principle. Most cocci commonly, clinically, are gram positive, and most bacilli are gram negative. Now, the reason why I'm showing this picture is because if you remember that principle, then it's easy to just remember the exceptions because what I'm showing here are gram-negative cocci and gram-positive bacilli. So if you remember that the exceptions to the gram-positive cocci are nice is Neisseria, then you'll know if you see a coccus, a coxal, a ball bacteria that is gram negative, it's probably Neisseria. If you see a rod or a bacillus that is gram positive, like we see here, you might want to use the ABCCLLP <laughs> acronym. And if you remember that, uh, for example, the bacillus family, like the ones causing anthrax, like you see here, is uh, gram positive. Corny bacterium is gram positive. Clostridium is gram positive. Lactobacillus is gram positive. Listeria is gram positive. And Propriani bacterium is gram positive. So if you want to remember that, like I do, as uh, BCCLLP as being the five common clinical bacteria, or six, I'm sorry, 
that are the exception to the bacilli being gram negative rule, you could do it that way. Um, and let's talk about now a general category of bacteria like organisms. They're not exactly bacteria because they don't have cell walls. They don't make ATP like bacteria does. And you can't culture them. They have no life out of a cell. So for this reason, the clustering of the infections known as chlamydial infections, rickettsial infections, and mycoplasmal infections are also said as being infections due to obligate intracellular organisms. And they're called obligate intracellular organisms because they are obliged to live in human cells to, uh, to survive. And remember, they have no cell walls like bacteria do. They have no mitochondria, and therefore they can't make ATP. And uh, they have no life out of a cell, so they can't be cultured. So here are your obligate intracellular bacteria. And we'll may make some references to them, or we may learn about them in other chapters. Let's move into the fungi now. Fungi are very commonly classified uh, clinically into a couple different ways. One of them is whether they infect, infect skin or superficial uh, structures. And one of them is whether they look like they are yeast forms or hyphae. So let's uh, talk about dermatophytes. Most of the dermatophytes are caused by organisms or genuses of organisms like trichophyton or microsporum, which infect only the skin. So therefore, they're superficial. And the family of these type infections are called tinias. On the other hand, bacteria, I'm sorry, fungi, which classically, characteristically infect deep tissues, uh, like uh, of which lung is, of course, the most common, would be uh, genus names like histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, and coccidiomycosis. And um, another way to classify fungi, at least in the laboratory or under the microscope of a pathologist, is if they look like little yeasts or little balls, perhaps with little buds, or whether they look like they have branches or hyphae. So, for example, if you see something like this, and it's stained with the fungal stain, which, of course, the PAS stain or a methenamine silver stain are the two most commonly used ones. If you see things that look strictly like little balls, those are yeasts. Some of these little balls may have bumps on them. These are the yeasts that are giving rise to buds. If, on the other hand, you're looking at branches like this, these are hyphae. So hyphae are the branches, yeasts are the balls. And in this particular case, we're looking at the uh, world's most uh, common fungus, which we all have, called Candida albicans. They are generally little buds and yeast, but they can also form these little branches, which they might want to call hyphae, or at least pseudo-hyphae. OK, so um, I think we've pretty much finished the uh, general overall discussion of uh, viruses bacteria and fungi, at least from their overall classification and clinical type classifications. Uh, we're going to have to say a whole bunch of things uh, about general parasites as well. And this is a good place to start. Parasites are either single cell infectious organisms called protozoans, or uh, parasites could be organisms that have more than one cell called metazoans. And for all practical purposes, this means helminths or worms. And there's a couple of different kinds of worms. In addition, a third type of parasite uh, could be arthropods, which would fall either into the insect or uh, arachnid family. So think of parasites as protozoans, metazoans, or ectoparasites, which are arthropods. That's it for now. Uh, we'll continue with the general uh, parasitology recap in the next group, and I thank you very much.